Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. We create photo realistic assets together. So for today's video, we're gonna talk about substance versus Mari. I actually didn't think I would have a full video about this subject again after the videos I made previously, but it's still a subject that come up in comments and people asking about very frequently. Then I saw this comment that made me want to make an entire video about this again. The comment says, Hi Chen Chen, I have been studying your tutorials for weeks and I know Mari is a great software, but I still believe that it is possible to achieve the same results and amount of details only using Substance. What makes you go back to Mari? It is a great comment, Daniel, and the short answer for that is what quality each software can achieve was not really the reason why I choose to use certain software. As a matter of fact, achieving high quality on an asset has everything to do with the skill of the artist, not the software. For example, remember this? I think that was my expression when I seen this for the first time. It's a time where we didn't debate about Substance versus Mari. So, how do a professional visual effects texture artist decide what software to use? The first thing you need to understand is a professional texture artist understands that every asset is its own unique problem-solving process. I mentioned this in a couple videos before, but I really want to emphasize this. I get comments and requests that make me feel like there is a sentiment that there is one ultimate cloth tutorial or leather tutorial or metal tutorial out there that will solve all these materials for you forever. In reality, that is probably not going to happen. Those tutorials can help for sure, but you can always encounter a new leather piece where the old way you used to do it won't work, and you will have to come up with new strategies. Same with software. No one software will do everything for you on every asset. For example, I made two different clothing pieces for two different characters. One is denim, which I have done completely inside a Substance Painter. I know that as long as I have a good denim fabric tolerable, I can achieve the quality I want inside a painter only. It was easy to break up the denim color using Substance Painter texture brush. On the other hand, when I was making the lace material on my female bust, I know that besides projecting the displacement, I will have to project the opacity at the same time, where Mari extremely flexible projection functions were a great advantage. So now I want to talk about Mari and Substance Painter's advantages and disadvantages. I don't want to spend too much time on this topic because I feel like in general my audience has a pretty good understanding of both software or at least one of them. If you are really going to debate about which software is quote unquote better, then you need to at least have a decent understanding of both of them. What is Mari famous for? For me, it is the extremely flexible and artistic projection functions. Its ability to handle heavy geometry, high resolution, and many UDIM tiles that visual effects production often requires. What is Substance Painter famous for? For me, it is the procedure workflows and the PBR real-time shading. Recently, both softwares have improved what they were lacking in the past. Substance Painter just officially added UDIM, Mari added mask baking functions and PBR shaders. They have become a bit similar software than before, and for me, they are running into the same limitations as well. Mari can handle hundreds of UDIMs at the same time. It's great for visual effects production. Now we have PBR shaders too. It's great, right? But when you're handling large assets like that, it's very unlikely you will use shaders at all. Turning on shaders makes everything slower. It's very hard on your machine, especially when you are deep into the texturing process where you have tons of textures, adjustments, and channels. Same with Substance Painter. We have UDIMs now, that is a great update. But on my personal machine, 10 4K UDIM is about reaching the point of stopping me right in the tracks. For example, I have two fill layers in the scene with seven 4K tiles. Every adjustment I do on the smart masks takes about five minutes to update. I have to lower viewport resolution so I can keep working. 
but that means less accuracy because I'm not looking at my final resolution while at work. I know you might say, hey, maybe your computer sucks. Well, this has been my experience on all my work machines from different studios as well. To summarize, real-time shading texturing on high-resolution large assets takes a lot out of your machine. None of the softwares can just take you there like that. So what are the main aspects to consider when you're choosing which software you're going to use to solve your problems? The first thing you have to think about is what are the unique problems you need to solve on this specific asset. Knowing what you know about the different softwares, which one should you use for which problem? For example, if I know the asset requires a lot of procedural breakup, Substance Painter has clear advantages. But if the asset requires super fine accurate projection, for example, a texture XYZ projection, I would rather use Mari. You see, in production, you make these decisions based on production needs. You need to consider what kind of quality you need for this asset. Is it background, mid-ground, or hero? If it's all the way in the back, you probably do not need high resolution, then Substance Painter will be faster. You also need to consider what is the time budget limitation. What software are you more comfortable with? If you're just so much faster inside Amari than Substance Painter that outweighs any kind of advantage that Substance Painter can give you, then you probably should use Mari. You also have to consider your hardware limitations. If my spaceship is 100 UDIM, I probably won't bring it into Painter, or at least I will have to separate the geometry into smaller groups and create a separate Painter scene for each group. If you ever worked in a professional CG studio, you will see, including the leads and the soups, we almost never tell each other how to do something. Maybe we do come up with general strategy sometimes, but there can be a thousand ways to dress a kitten, and everybody understands that. We critique the final look, but we don't micromanage how you achieve the look. As long as it looks how you're supposed to, it's finished within deadline, and it fits into the pipeline, you can do whatever you want. I hope this video resolves some of your questions. I'm sure this is not the last time we'll talk about these softwares together. I would say give both a try and see what works for you. That is everything I have for you today. If you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. I will see you in the next one.